Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another weekly edition of Mid Rank Madness. This is a game between Lamanite and Guacamole on Frozen Temple. In the bottom right side of the map, we have the blue Protoss player. It is Lamanite, representing Dark Sodas. <laughs> that is a great clan name. And in the top left side of the map, we have the orange Zerg player. It is Guacamole. All right, that's a great name too. Guacamole rolls right off the tongue. A PVZ for Midrake Madness. I don't remember the last time I've cast a PVZ in Midrake Madness, but uh, I'm sure you can remind me in the comments. All right, in the background, you hear Brood War music. All right, I love the Terran theme so much. Reminds me of the very, very first time I played StarCraft back when I was in high school. It was an amazing multiplayer game, LAN parties. First time I saw an Archon, I about peed my pants because it was so, so amazing and so powerful and so unstoppable, I thought. But then I learned more about the game, and it didn't seem so scary. All right, also, in other news, this is Midrake Madness. If you haven't seen one of these before, it is a platinum, gold, and diamond level of StarCraft II. People can send me their replays at this level to falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of, subject of mid rank madness, and I will send them to my screeners. The best ones will be chosen and cast on the channel as this one was. Alrighty then, so very standard opening here from Guacamole. Hatch first into an extractor into spawning pool, and what we have over here is what looks like, oh, it's a one base play from Lamanite. Alright, double gas here, one base play, not another gateway quite yet, I believe Lamanite could probably stand to have another gateway here, but again, it's spending the money quite well. Getting those pylons up, again, not getting supply blocked, a very excellent choice there, maybe one more gateway here at 150 would be nice, I'm not sure what the timings are intended to be here for Lamanite, but, but, uh, uh, actually a zealot coming up here, so worried about early pressure from the zerg, now that's interesting. That's really interesting. If you watch some of my probe replays, you never see an early Zealot from Protoss against Zerg. What they like to do is scout with the probe, see what's going on here, see the timing on that spawning pool. If the spawning pool is still going up when the probe shows up at the other base, you know you don't have to get a Zealot. There's no reason to wall off here. I'm actually not even convinced this is a full wall. I'm really, really worried a Zergling can slip past that thing if Zerglings did happen to show up. Luckily for Lamanite, there are none of that no Zerglings coming. So I didn't worry about that. Okay, two in production, but it's going to be a while. Mothership Core on the way, Stalker on the way, and a Stargate opening for Lamanite. All right, works for me. Queen popping here for Guacamole. No higher tech chosen yet for our Zerg player. Possibly a Roach Warren would be nice, or a Lair, or something. Guacamole has enough gas and enough minerals to do stuff. Definitely getting an Overlord. Try not, not to be supply blocked there either. Stalker chasing away this Overlord, getting it stabbed right in the face there. And here we go. There's Forge, Pylon, Forge. Another gateway and an Oracle opening. All right, so Oracle opening at Zerg players. If you're in this situation, I highly recommend you have a Spore Crawler and a Queen inside each mineral line to deal with possible Oracle openings. If you haven't been able, been able to scout, you don't know exactly what is coming because of Stalkers holding off your Overlords from getting inside there. Again, Spore Crawlers are so good. They're good against Phoenix, Oracles, and Dark Templar openings. And they're good against Observers that try to sneak around. So I recommend getting that as a Queen and a Spore Crawler are so much more effective against an Oracle than just a plain queen is, or even two queens, honestly. So there's a lair coming up for Guacamole, popping on the Evolution Chamber and a Roach Warren, kind of doing a wall off here with a Spine Crawler, worried about early aggression. Here is our player Guacamole. I like this orange. I really do like the orange from the Zerg. And there goes the expansion from Lamanite. Lamanite? Lama... Man alive, I have a hard time saying this name. I think it's Lamanite, though. Kind of like Samsonite. Here comes the Oracle, trying to sneak on into the main base here. What is here to defend against it? I think a single Queen and a Spore Crawler is on the way. Hey! Nicely done. You're still going to lose a couple workers just because that Spore Crawler is a little bit late. But bam You took it on out. Lost four workers there. But did take out the Oracle. So probably a fair trade as far as the Zerg is concerned. No more worries about that Oracle swinging back around and killing more stuff. So again, a little bit earlier on the Spore Crawler would have been nice. But in the end, didn't really cost too much and did take down the Oracle on the other side of things. And it looks like this game was played on the Game Heart interface. So if you send me your replays and you want the little worker counts, the worker killed count to show up, you want to see upgrade timers show up over here too, look for the Game Heart version of the map you're playing on against a friend uh, in, the, uh, in the custom games interface uh, of StarCraft 2. You should be able to find the Game Heart version of most maps. And then you'll get that neato thing there. It'll show up like this one. Ground weapons level 1. 10 seconds to go. So nice. So nice when you're casting... 
Anyway, so you can do that. Third hatch on the way for Guacamole. What else is happening here from Lemonit? It is a robotics facility popping up. Another gateway here and plus one armor. Not going for attack first. Armor instead, which is fine. Depending on what you want to do. Ooh, and robotics bay popping up too. So we might see disruptors. It's been a while since we've seen a really heavy disruptor play in a PvZ. Just because I feel like disruptors... <sighs> Zergs are getting better at dodging. They're getting it better at getting Vipers to abduct those Disruptors into lines and just murdering them as the abduct does cancel Purification Novas. If you're a Zerg player struggling with these things, with Disruptors, go ahead and get Vipers and you'll be much, much happier in the long run. Observer popping on out here too. Missile Attack level 1 and Galil Reconstitution popping up for Guacamole. So going very heavy on Roaches. Uh, are we going to go see uh, any Hydras here? No, I don't see any Hydras popping up. The Creep Spread is not bad. A couple Ravagers. Mixed on in Observer heading on up. And yeah, finally getting a better scout off. I mean, all the Oracle really saw here was the spawning pool. But Zealots, Stalkers, Zealot Stalker, I don't really recommend this. Going against Zerg, Roaches, and Ravagers are very good against this particular combination that Lamanite is going for. But I feel like, yeah, Disruptors will be out before too long, before an attack comes from a Guacamole. But Roaches, Ravagers, both players spending their money okay. Guacamole really actually having a hard time doing this thing. 400, 500, and 800 minerals and gas stocked up. Needs to make more workers, which would be nice. Income tab is 46 to 37 harvesters in favor of Guacamole. And here come the Disruptors. Is Lamanit going to do a push? That is the tough thing to do in StarCraft 2 with these levels, is pushing out. It's so scary, but against the Zerg especially, you really have to get out there. You really have to force them to make things other than drones. Elsewise, they will get up 80 drones and then macro up a giant army in 4 seconds and you will die. That is the scary thing. So actually heading up this way, a Ling does scout this push by the army and pulling back very smartly is Guacamole to defend this third base. And I mean, Lemonite knows he's been scouted out. Is he going to push on up and see what he can do anyway? He has to break down all these rocks though. Okay, one set of rocks to get through here, so it's going to take him a while. It's just an additional avenue of attack. Creep spread being pushed on through here, too. That actually is going to come up unless the Stalker focuses it down. Nicely done by Lama Neat. And here comes a small push of Roaches and Ravagers chasing this thing away, trying to focus down the Disruptor. And no, oh, gets it. Gets it before the explosion of that Nova. Wow, great play by Guacamole. Looked out a little bit, but man, this is a lot of Roaches, a lot of Ravagers. Plus one on these guys and the Glial Reconstitution, the plus one armor and plus one attack. Not enough. On these Stalkers, as I said, without the Disruptor hits, that is a terrible composition against Roach and Ravager. Heading on down this way, a small Roach hit squad trying to see what they can kill. Lamanit not really looking to take a third base anytime soon. Only has about 37 Harvesters, which isn't fantastic at this point. But again, this isn't professional level. This is super amateur level, and people are very brave to play this game and send in the replays to be cast. So... I won't hit them too hard. Trying to push up here in the front door. Trying to <laughs> actually morph into Ravager right here. The Immortal helps immensely. Photon Overcharge doing a great job. Two Guacamole just pushing right on and taking out that pylon. Bam! It does end up falling. Crossabile being tossed on down. Greatly weakening a couple of those Stalkers too. Oh, Purification Nova! Wham! Taking down a Ravager. Throwing its corpse into the air. And pulling back a little bit here as Guacamole. It looks like we're going to see some pretty steady Roach Ravager pushing with Infestors. Infestors in a mid-rake madness game. Haven't seen this, honestly, in a while, if ever. Infestors get off the front lines. Infestors get off the front lines. Oh, one dies immediately. Nice fungal, though, keeping everybody in place. Nothing can really take down the Mothership Core. Another Nova! Wow, killing four Ravagers instantly there. The remaining Ravager does take down a Stalker. Mothership Core doing shots from above. Just doesn't hit necessarily hard enough. Small group of Roaches and Ravagers here trying to take down that pylon. They think they'll be able to get it, and yes, they indeed they do. No more pylons here. No more Photon Overcharges. I lied. There's enough for one more Photon Overcharge. The Infestors running around. Another Purification Nova killing two Roaches. Pretty good split by Guacamole, though, but the remaining Stalkers do pop on down. Try to kill the rest of these Roaches, and looks like Guacamole is going to head on home with the Infestors leading that retreat. Fourth base on the way for a Guacamole. Lamanit. Lamanit needs to go ahead and get a fourth Nexus here at some point. That would be nice. Some injects from Guacamole might be nice as well. There we go. That's a great inject. And this, you too, Queen. You can do this thing. 100 energy on you. Get on in there and inject this hatch. So important for your macro. So darn important. Overseer sneaking around. And Void Rays coming up. Where did we see Void Rays recently? We saw a uh, Scarlet versus, I want to say, Cyan. I believe it was Scarlet versus Scion on Ruins of Endion, where the Protoss player actually went Void Rays and took down a Hydralisk army. 
Now, the numbers are fairly even. It's not like there were a lot of Hydras, but still, it was kind of surprising to see that. So, Void Ray is not terrible, especially not in these lower levels where it does take a certain amount of micro to focus down the Void Rays. And in the meantime, they're actually hitting you pretty hard. So, the reaction time for Zerg needs to be good in order to deal with these things, which makes them, uh, honestly, they're a little bit uh, overpowered at super low levels, especially at Bronze. Void Rays, just, they can kill everything. They hit really hard. And uh, I'd recommend doing that if you're in Bronze or Silver. You just can't rely on them too much as you start moving up that ladder. It turns out. Income 62 to 41 harvesters. Guacamole floating a lot of minerals, but spending the gas fairly well. A hey, Ultralist Cavern on the way. Now, I'm not sure how big of a fan I am of this. Just because you've seen Disruptors, you have seen Immortals. Both of those things are pretty darn good against Ultras. Uh, I might prefer to go for something like a Muta type play. Again, as the Immortals and Disruptors do nothing against it. The Stalker count is not particularly high. But again, Guacamole is going to go for that Ultra play instead. A lot of static defense being popped on up. Can the army get here before the spines pop? Where's the most of the army? The army's up here. Guacamole doesn't actually have a lot of stuff. 14 Roaches and 5 Ravagers. Not a big army. Here come a lot of Stalkers. Plus one, plus one finish. I don't see any further upgrades. And a recall home. Oh, the recall to save the space from basically 6 Roaches. And what that did is that just bought Guacamole the time he needed to get these spawn crawlers up to get more and more units added to his main army. That was a nice counterattack by the Zerg player. I really like that play from Guacamole. Again, the way that Zergs have been taught to play StarCraft 2 since Wings of Liberty is just defense. It's defend, 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 expand, 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 and then when you've crushed an attack by your opponent, then counterattack and see what you can kill. But with Le uh, Legacy of the Void, I feel like Zergs can be a lot more aggressive. There's a Spire coming up. They can do little pushes of Roaches and Ravagers, be assertive with things, trade evenly with Protoss and Terran, and be just fine. Another expansion here for Guacamole. Holy Guacamole. Looking great. Coming from the high ground, though. Guacamole in a bit of a tough spot. Lamanit walking right past it. Passing in the night. Oh, Roach spots it. They're going to turn around here? Yes, going to turn around. Here's a big battle going to happen. And a Fungal Bile, but no. Purification Nova taking out a couple Ravagers very easily. Another one on the bottom side. Only a couple Roaches there. Pretty good split by the Zerg player. Can they stand on in and do this thing? The Immortal doing a great job with five total kills, but the Ravagers... Focusing it down, and I think they're going to go ahead and get it. The rest of the army get cleaned up too. Can the Mothership Core be destroyed? Can the Void Rays be killed by the Corrosive Bile on these Ravagers? Going to try to get it anyway, and there it is. Getting the Mothership Core, not the Void Ray though. Does not end up getting the Void Ray. Sits here with three total kills. More Corrosive Bile's landing. Pretty good dodge there by Lamanite of Dark Soda. And just pushing through here is Guacamole knocking down these rocks. It's a pretty good army of Stalkers and an Immortal and a Disruptor here. Very similar to the composition that just got destroyed earlier on. Prismatic Alignment being used. That's such, such a good thing here. It is Prismatic Alignment. Realigns the Void Rays Prismatic Beam to gain 6 damage versus Armored, which guess what? Void Rays, I mean, Roaches are Armored units here. Just pushing in once again here is a Zerg player. Zealous not doing much at all. Great split by Guacamole. That's the best one we've seen all day so far. Roaches and Ravagers not going to win this one, I don't think. Another Photon Overcharge does pop up. The Zealots hacking away from the top side, and they do. All the Zerg units get completely exploded there, and a big warp in of Stalkers and Zealots helping out on the way. Charge on the way for the Zealots, plus two ground weapons being researched for a Lamanite here. Guacamole, meanwhile, does have that Ultra Cavern. Has he made any Ultras, actually? Yeah, he's got five of them. Okay, so five Ultras looking good. Not by yourselves, though, Ultras. You need support. It's just like sending Colossus by themselves into battle. Not a great idea. You only need something to tank. I mean, not necessarily tank damage, but just kind of distract. If all of the Protoss army can focus on the Ultra the whole time like this Void Ray can, it's a bad look. It is not very good for the Ultras at all, even if they have good upgrades and not the best here, actually. Uh, no, Kindness Plating has finished. They do have seven armor. That's good. Kaiser Blades here. Plus one attack. Queen stabbing away. Queen with an Infestor support. A Fungal would be nice. Some Infested Terrans would be nice. Infester, help. No, the Void Ray pops on out of there. Gets out. Some Static Defense being thrown down here. Transferred from another base, actually. I wonder where that was transferred from. Possibly up here? I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Adrenal Glands on the way, increasing the attack speed of those Lings. Such a great upgrade. That was my favorite upgrade for Zerglings, honestly. Getting a plus attack and plus armor is very good. Not going to argue with that one at all, but just helping them to attack even more quickly is just just beautiful all right or more 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 quickly more quick more quickly yeah plus the th two armor on the way for the protoss player it is plus one and plus two on those upgrades so far void is looking good too immortal count double pumping immortals great choice you saw those ultras you know what's good against ultras immortals with their extra damage versus armored here we go 
Guacamole pushing up this ramp here with a Ling. Big ol' boom. A lot of Lings died there. Nice, nice target firing there by the Disruptors here. Ultra does get a shot up before it dies on the top side. And Fester's throwing down Fungals very nicely here too. Right on the front lines is exactly where the Ultras want to be. The Immortals are trying to stutter step their way, way back where they do take out one Ultra. Photon Overcharge being used too. They're taking a lot of Stalkers with them. But no, the Immortals managed to live. And they're focusing down the Ultras that are taking down a Pylon. And they don't even get the Pylon. The Queen stabbing away too. The Ultras are all completely gone. Immortal with zero kills. That one has one kill. Who got all the kills here? That one has three. One, one. And a full retreat here. The Queens, they joined the attack. They thought they'd be able to be victors here at the 15 minute mark, but no. Did not happen. Where the heck did probes die? Down here, I guess? Yeah, I might have got in here with an Ultra due to some probe killing, but not really too much by way of things. It's still 80 to 45 in favor of Guacamole. Corruptors being mixed on in. I like this. Corruptors versus Void Rays do pretty good, except their prismatic alignment does actually work on them. Look how fast those Corruptors are dying. Ultra is trying to get some cleaves off a transfuse, keeping the Ultra alive temporarily. But it does get destroyed. Corruptors flying on in. Not much to do anymore as the Void Rays are all fled or completely dead. Either fled or dead. Guacamole expanding like a madman. Look at this. He's expanding while attacking so well at this point. APM average 215 for Guacamole. Average 100 for Lamanite. But still continuing to push here with the Stalker Immortal combo. I like this. Queen's dying. Creep spread getting destroyed. Tumors. Overlord's dying too. Spines trying to do what they can, but these Immortals are so good against Spines. Stalkers too, actually. And a Broodlord pops on in and gets focused immediately down by the Stalkers and dies. Another Fungal being taken down by the Infestors. Infestors have been really, really good at this thus far. Ultras do pop on out. Bad rally, but they do hit get right on top of the army. Take down a couple Stalkers there, but again, the Immortals are refusing to die here. Literally up to their name. Ten kills. Seven kills. Eight kills on these Immortals. Or can they do this thing? A Fungal takes out one of them. Oh, dying to a Fungal is so embarrassing. More Ultras popping on out. And the Lings. Do the Lings not have speed? What is happening? The Lings don't have speed. How? There it is. Now getting Metabolic Boost. Guacamole saying, I didn't get Ling speed. How is that even possible? I don't know. You forgot it at some point, though. So it's 140 to 86 total supply. The Zerg player looking super duper healthy in this game, but the Immortals are being replaced. Really need something to do with these Broodlords. How's that Stalker count looking? Eight? I don't know if eight's going to be enough. But the Lings, are they fully upgraded? No, still don't have anything besides plus one attack, which is going to hurt quite a bit. But again, they do have the Adrenal Glands upgrade, which I'm a fan of as usual. Observer bouncing around. Creep spread looking good. Drones are transferring over this way too. Here come the Ultras on top of everything. Lings not even having speed. Another great Fungal. The Corruptors take down the Mothership Core. Ultras are getting destroyed. They're trying to smash down the Immortals. The Stutter Step Micro here by Laminite has been great, but the Broodlings coming from above, focusing down that Disruptor. Can they get it? Uh, they... No, oh, the Disruptor lives. The Disruptor lives, and the Stalker count enough to actually chase away these Broodlords. Broodlings being rained down like fire, but the Stalker is ignoring those, going for the Broodlords instead. Did that Disruptor stay alive? It stayed alive. <laughs> Broodlings doing a great job against those Stalkers, actually, though. Free units, man. Five hit points remaining on that Disruptor. One more shot, I think, from a Broodling. Would have killed it. Corruptor is trying to take down this Phoenix and going to be able to get it there. More Broodlings being morphed on in here. Are there enough? No, I don't know. One Broodling by itself, or one Broodlord by itself. Not that great. Stalker count, again, looking fantastic from Lamanit here. And can the Broodlords morph on in, or is it going to be too late? Oh, the cancel! The cancel on the Broodlord. Speedlings running on in here to do something, but they seem a little bit lost. The Broodlord chased all the way home and get destroyed, or rather the one Broodlord. Another expansion here from a Guacamole Lings. Trying to just go back home, getting focused down. Can any of them make it? Yes, one Ling. One Ling makes it home to his Ultralisk brethren here. Again, the Ultra is trying to do what they can, but you really need, I don't know, Fungals to hold those Immortals in place. Oh, uh, Morphing Broodlord's right there. Not a great choice, man. Bam, bam, and bam. Plus two attack on these Stalkers. Looking so, so good. More static defense attempting to be put up here. Ultras trundling on in. Every time they do, they take huge hits, though, from the Immortals doing 60 damage versus Armored. 60 versus the Immortals with a pretty big attack speed, too, or versus the Ultras with a pretty big attack speed, too. Pretty fast one. Look at how many Ultras have died so far in this game. 20 Ultras have died. We're going to make these guys 21 and 22. Bam, bam. Woo! The Ultra Massacre looking great. Lamedy being so darn cost-effective to this point. Wow. Resources lost. 22,000 versus 14,000. 
compared to the Protoss player so far. This micro has been good. The compositions have been good. The upgrades have been pretty darn good too. This base might finally actually die. There are more Infestors and more Ultras on the way here too. The drones are coming to fight. Why are you fighting drones? Don't do that. Oh, they're gone now. Will not know what their motivation was ever. Cannot interrogate them after the fact. And Hatchery gets exploded. Overlords die too. Broodlings coming to avenge the death of their home. But no, they can't do much of anything because they are super weak. More and more creep spread getting destroyed. Creep tumors being killed here too. Some Ultras in these eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and just walking around now is Lamanid saying, where's the rest of the Zerg army? Have I destroyed all of it? It's 128 to 122 total supply here. Stalkers coming on up, killing more and more of these drones. Still 60 to 49, though, in favor. Oh, another Ultra dies of our Zerg player. Ultras with bad rallies. Oh, bad rallies. Yeah, I don't. I mean, the Fungals are good, but the Fungals need to coincide, I think, with the Ultras is the problem. And he's get his timing down. Does Guacamole here. Fungal the army so it can't move. Right? It's not there for damage purposes. Yes, it does a little bit of damage, but it's not much. And really, the most important part of that is the plaque, is the fact that it puts them into an immobile state. Ling's down here, though. Nice counterattack with Ling. Still no plus to attack on those guys. These dudes, not quite sure what to do as there are Ling's destroying his stuff. A lot of Zealots and a lot of Stalkers, though. And those Ling's are going to die. Yep, all of them but two so far trying to take down a probe. Can they get a single probe kill before they're destroyed? No! The probe lives, still continuing to push it with the Immortals and the Stalkers. Spine Crawlers are of no consequence to this army. More and more drones being killed here, too. The Greater Spire could be focused down. Oh, Infester, bad place to be. All right, two over or two Ultras versus this many Immortals. And the Stutter Step has just been super good here. One Immortal does die, but man, the Ultras just absolutely being destroyed. Another one pops on out. Does it? Can it take another couple Ultras with him? Yes! Oh, he can Oh, no, just one! Oh, he gets one. Good transfuses on the Queens. The Queens trying to deal with this thing. More and more Ultras popping on out. Guacamole with the income out the wazoo right now. And finally, this attack gets cleaned up. The Spore Crawler takes out the Observer too. And the Protoss Incursion has been slowed. All right, more Stalkers, more Zealots heading on out to see what they can do here. This base is oversaturated. I'd like to see Lamanid expand again, but... Some scary options here. This doesn't seem like a good place to be as Ultras are trundling right through it at this very moment. This base is going to die. The Phoenix scouted this one out a while ago. And finally, coming in with the plus two, plus two on the Stalker is going to do a lot of work. The Ultras might go for something of a base race, leaving this one alone. If they can get into the main and actually kill some unit producing structures, that would be useful. Getting rid of these two robotics facilities would be amazing. All right, they are thinking about it, but no, they decide not to. They actually back on out. That's okay. Broodlords getting morphed in here, too. Broodlords and Ultras here from Guacamole. I feel like the Ultras can handle this. I really do. Lamanit believes that, no, he thinks that I'm wrong. He thinks these Zealots and these Stalkers can deal with this many Ultras. I will disagree. So get the robotics facility. Get it before the Immortals pop out. Oh, there's one! There is one, and another one comes from the top side as well here. One Ultra going to die very quickly, and indeed it does. Another one, too, getting focused down. The Zealots tanking a lot of damage, and can the Ultra get that? Yes, gets the Robotics Facility, fighting against a Zealot here. The Broodlords coming from above. Queens is stabbing away, too. The Ultras are completely gone, but the Broodlords... Broodlords doing fairly well. Another big attack up here. More and more Ultras trying to get right on top of these Zealots and these Stalkers. The Zealots not doing a lot of damage, but tanking a lot of it for the Stalkers here. Finally, though, the Ultra does fall. Another one falls, too. This main base for Guacamole is in a lot of trouble. How are the Broodlords looking? The Stalkers manage to take them down. Queen getting destroyed, too. And that's it. A GG from Guacamole. Guacamole is defeated, and Alamanit is victorious. Well done. Well played indeed from Lamanit here. There was a time when I thought for sure the Zerg had it. The Zerg had more bases. The Zerg had, I think, a better tier 3 units. Had some good upgrades too, but never quite got the upgrades that he needed. Never quite got the Fungals and the Ultras to work together at the same time. And never really got a critical mass of Broodlords. Really, what you want is at least 8 Broodlords, I'd say. 6 at a minimum. 6, 8, 10, 12 is best. I think 12 Broodlords here instead of Ultras would have likely crushed this entire army, getting some Corruptors to deal with any Void Rays that show up. But in the end, good choices here by Lamanite. Recognize the continued Ultra production, continue to make Immortals to counter those guys. Stalkers, the Micro, good there as well. And just continuing to push up, even when it was scary. Kept pushing, finally took this base out, got this one, made a whole big march up through here. Almost took out that hatch, but didn't quite get around to it. And finally marched into the main base and took the game. So... Well played indeed by Lamanite, who is our victor today. All right, so that's it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin with yet another weekly mid-rank madness. 
go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what is on, what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter and Facebook, both at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.
watch over you Shara Sashi, yeah.